All right, let's start the webinar. Thank you, everybody. People have shown up. They're still showing up. Uh, thank you. Welcome to How to Retire Early with Twice the Income. My name is Charlie Jewett from the Renovating Retirement Podcast, and hopefully uh, you looked me up, Charlie Jewett. You can look me up on Google and kind of see what I've done in the industry, who I am, the books I write, the podcasts that I run. Uh, starting four years ago, when I kind of confronted the industry and said, hey, you guys better stop lying to everybody and tell them the truth. That's part of my job as the financial services whistleblower. And what I'm going to talk about today is how to retire early with twice the income, because over 17 years, I learned that it's actually quite easy to do. So this is what I look like. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the video and jump into the content. Let's do it. Most people work 10 years longer than they need to, or they retire on half the income they deserve. Now, that sounds shocking. How could that possibly be true? Well, I found, this is just what I found, I found when looking inside of American retirement planning that we're using very outdated models. If you've heard of the company, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, UBS, AG Edwards, if you've kind of heard that brand name company, even the, the captive insurance agencies like New York Life, Mass Mutual, when I study what they're teaching, when I studied their products using math, just using reality, not tradition or my own emotions, when I studied it starting in 2005, I just found that they're not using the most modern techniques or modern tools for building financial plans. And I thought, okay, let's try it a different way and see what happens. So why are you here? Is it even going to be worth your time? Let's cover that first. What you will learn from this webinar. One, I'm going to teach you a simple model that has changed tens of thousands of people's lives. I'm going to teach you the model that I came up with in 2005 when I entered the industry as a rookie, I did have real estate and mortgage background, which was cool. But even further back, I was an electrician and I was used to blueprints. You know, an architect kind of designs everything globally. And then there's a general contractor running the team and all the subcontractors, which in my industry would be insurance agents, you know, stockbroker or money manager, tax professional, mortgage professional, all the subcontractors were supposed to do their job do what they've been told to do. When I got into this industry, I found that usually there's no blueprints, no general contractor. You just have subcontractors telling you what to do and pushing you around. And I didn't like that. So I made a new model and it's been incredible. I'll teach it to you. I'm also going to give you a five question survey or stress test that is going to guarantee that your financial plan is completely optimized. Now, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you could say, hey, Charlie, or hey, me, myself, without Charlie, is my plan a good plan? Whether you made it up yourself or you got it from a company like Edward Jones or Merrill Lynch or whatever, wouldn't it be nice to test it and see if it's going to work? I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that with a stress test that I came up with, which I know you're going to love. Secondly, or thirdly, a three-part financial blueprint that anyone can do on their own. Wait till you see how simple it is. And this will beat every financial plan on the market today. I've seen financial plans that were 80 pages long all of it hypothetical based on the stock market. Here's what might happen. This one page financial plan, which really could be three lines long. You can actually see it in my book, Renovating Retirement. You are going to see how simple this really can be. You do not need anybody telling you what you want. You can be your own architect. I can help you. No one else should tell you what you want. They should be helping you get the products and services and investments that deliver what you want. Now, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about my background. Did I grow up totally wealthy and therefore I'm qualified to teach you how to get rich? That is not at all my past. If you see this house, which is really a duplex, believe it or not, in Pennsylvania, Cal Pennsylvania, California, in Pennsylvania, media, Pennsylvania, the right hand side is where I live. I had half a house. I had half a bedroom. How do I know that? Because I had a wall down the middle of my bedroom that went into the middle of the window. So I had a half a room. My brother had the other half of the room. And at times, had literally half a breakfast. We couldn't afford milk. So I put orange juice in my Cheerios. I still remember it because it was disgusting. But on the right hand side, you will see my mother, Mary. She is beautiful. She is amazing. She is my hero. She was not necessarily a single mom. I saw my dad every other weekend in New Jersey. But my mom worked her buns off as a teacher in the 70s. I don't know what she made, $18,000, $20,000 a year, something like that, 23, let's say, and sent my brother to a private school called the School in Rose Valley, which is kind of famous. And it was $3,000 a year per kid after tax. And so she spent $6,000 a year on education. And you will see that that education has been amazing for me. Now, my mom, my hero, retired in 1999. 
to Walnut Creek, California, beautiful home with my stepdad. And two events caused her to come out of retirement. The market crash of 2000, 2001, the dot-com bubble, and then um, kind of bad timing in one sense. My stepdad buying a business at the time caused my mom to say, with the loss of money in my portfolio and the increased risk of owning this new business, I cannot be retired. She went back to work for 13 years, missed the birth of both of my children, missed the first seven and five years of my kids' lives because she was back at work coming out of retirement. That has had a big effect on the way that I approach retirement planning, which you will hear more about. Now, who am I in the industry? If you did look me up, my first book was Two Ways to Be Debt-Free. So I'm an author, just like my brother, who's an author, Andy Jewett, my dad, who's an author, John, De John W. Jewett Jr. My brother and my dad are professors. Am I a professor? No, I'm a teacher. So you'll see me on TV sometimes. You're going to hear me on podcasts. I didn't like the uh, teacher salary, and I got a little bit of an entrepreneurial flair to me, which you'll find out. So how do I do my teaching? I do my teaching on the Renovating Retirement podcast, which when I recorded this, had 115 uh, when I captured this picture at 115 episodes. And now today, it's probably got, you know, 185 to 200 episodes. And so this is something that we just want to ask, do people like it? If you look on the left hand side, 50 ratings with five stars. Yay. Thank you guys for rating this. But if you want to learn more about how to do retirement the right way, and not be pressured by a salesperson, for heaven's sakes, that's silly then just listen to the podcast, train yourself. I get a little goofy. I sing songs. It's edumatainment. You got to put up with that shenanigans, but you know, it's more fun to learn when you're having fun along the way. Why do I believe that this webinar is going to help you? I believe you're here by fate and you're going to be thankful that you watched and stayed to the end. Why is that? One is experience. I couldn't say this when I was a rookie. I never said this when I was a rookie, but today I've done over 2000 financial plans. I've done this over 2000 times. You learn a thing or two when you build 2,000 financial plans that say, what's the alternatives to the stock market? What if the stock market didn't exist and nobody ever wanted the risk of having to come out of retirement or gambling and hoping that the past performance you know, repeats itself? Really, what else is out there? When you do that over 2,000 times, you learn kind of a lot. It's been fun for me. Why else? My clients retire really early. There is no like slavery and I got to work till I'm 67 or 70. That is not true. You can retire on a third of the money that most people tell you if you understand the non-traditional tools that are all safer, by the way, than the tools that you're using before we become friends. So we make sure that everybody retires early if they want to. You don't have to, but it's nice to reach your freedom point and say, you know what? I would never have to work another day in my life if I didn't want to, but I'm going to go to work because I like it, or I'm going to go to work part-time. Let me tell you about my buddy, Mark. Here's a picture of my buddy, Mark. He came to me at 57 years old as a referral from another friend that was at work with him at the electric company here in San Diego, where I live. Mark came in, showed me his finances and said, Charlie, I've been turning wrenches for the electric company, the gas and electric company for 30 years. My arms hurt every day. I'm not sure how much longer I can do it. My mom is sick. I don't know how much longer she has. I'm only 57. I'm not 59 and a half. What am I going to do? And I said, Mark, forget tradition. Let's look at reality. If you tap your retirement accounts before you're 59 and a half, there's a penalty. That's it. There's a penalty. It's just a number. It's not illegal. It's not immoral. You're not going to go to jail. There's just a penalty. And I said, we're talking money here, right? And I said, what are you talking about? You're talking about the loss of your arms, missing the last days or months or years of your mother's life. I'm talking about real, important, amazing things. If you destroy your arms and they don't work or they hurt throughout your entire retirement, that is not worth any amount of money, even two, three more years of salary. He kind of understood it and said, well, let's look at it. We dug into it and with his financial plan, the way it was set up, if we did pay those penalties, which again, it's not illegal or immoral. You don't have to do it if your arms aren't falling apart, but his were, and he had a sick mom. So we retired him because literally he could have worked part-time for 10 hours a week and paid the equivalent of what the penalty was calling it, uh, going to cost him. And he said, that's fine with me. I retired Mark early at 57 years old so that he could spend time with his mom before she passed away. And she did end up passing away. Some months later, he got to spend a ton of sweet time with him. And then I got a call from Mark's wife. And Mark passed away. 
And nobody expected that. Little did I know, excuse me, little did I know when I retired Mark at 57 that I was giving his family their last year's days with him, not going to work, but spending time with him. His wife is still a client of mine. We did have life insurance, which is very important. It is certainly not the only part of a financial plan. It is one part. And we took, he took great care of his wife, but that is not what we expected. We retired him early to spend time with his mom and to save his arms. Now, can you really benefit from this relationship, a relationship with me? Ultimately, you're going to hear that I'm saying, you know what, let's be friends. Let's talk. Let me see if I can, <laughs> you know, be helpful to you in any way. What else would be important or why might you benefit? None of my clients ever come out of retirement. It has never happened and it will probably never happen unless someone gets bored of sitting around doing honeydews and wants to do something part-time, which is fine, but you never have a surprise in the market or some surprise financially that says you're a slave and have to go back to work because we think about that ahead of time, which you're going to see in the stress test. That was my goal when I started my business because my mom went back to work in 2001, came out of retirement. She's my hero. I didn't like that. 2005 is when I discovered comprehensive financial planning and have built from there. So let's jump into the three things that I want to teach you, this model, this new and improved model for how you look at your finances and how we work together if we're going to be friends. The merit planning model for continual improvement. I created this in 2005 and called it financial architecture. And if anyone listening or watching has a background in construction or anything, you'll recognize this. Construction is kind of global. The architect is not a plumber, a roofer, a mason, a drywaller. The architect is the global mind, the designer of the whole plan and what everyone needs to do to make the client's dream come true. Well, you have dreams for retirement. Someone's got to design it, you and I together, me, you with me checking, you by yourself, whatever you do, someone is the architect. Well, the merit planning model is an acronym for mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan. Why is this important? 2,000 financial plans later, 10,000 families I've looked at, most people come to me and they have part of the middle one. They have part of the retirement plan. Why? Because the most popular quote retirement planning and financial planning firms in the business, not they're not the best because of the results they give. They're the best because of how much money they have or how much they advertise. Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, UBS, Charles Schwab. When you look at what they're doing, they're doing one version of retirement planning, which is non-guaranteed income, non-guaranteed growth, risk with a side of fees. It's not that the stock market is good or bad. It's that it doesn't guarantee anything. Therefore, it makes it quite difficult to plan on anything. This is called retirement planning. So when I approach the market, by the way, I have a Series 65 license. I'm allowed to sell stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Very rarely will I do it. You have to twist my arm because every other tool that's safer also has a higher rate of return. You may not believe that, but you will see that in your relationship with me. Are there some crappy tools that pay less? Yes, but in the same category, there's going to be a different version from a different company that pays more than the stock market has over the last 20 years. So if you have part of or one version of retirement planning, as opposed to the mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan blended together harmoniously, so they're not fighting each other, but working together, you're going to absolutely love learning this from me. I have videos, I have books, I have the relationship with me. I'll teach you everything I know. Why is tax planning important? When I ask people, do you think taxes are going up or down? Everybody says up. Why? Because the country's in trouble. Can't afford Medicare. Can't afford Social Security. David Walker quit his job, travels the country telling people taxes have to double or they have to cut benefits in half. Historically, taxes go up and up and up. They're really low. You know, right now, we, we always think we pay too much, but they're fairly low. I can get almost everybody into a 0% tax bracket at retirement. No problem in my sleep, unless you're so blessed to have a pension. If you have a pension... I can't eliminate 100% of your taxes. Boo hoo, you're too blessed, but that's fine. If you're making a pension of $5,000 a month and you have to pay taxes, count it all joy. No problem at all. Now, I met a woman named Jody who was a, she worked at a college here locally in San Diego. 
And I met her and said, when would you like to retire? She's a beautiful woman, bubbly, smiley, amazing woman. I said, when would you like to retire, Jody? She goes, yesterday. I was like, okay, let's look at this. That's my favorite kind of planning. It's not that I don't like people that love their job and don't want to retire yet. I just find the challenge fun to say, oh my goodness, they want to retire immediately and would be really happy if I could do that. I like that challenge. So I said, well, let's take a look at it, Jody. I looked at her situation and I said, in my opinion, if we restructured your mortgage plan, if we added an estate plan, if we did your retirement planning completely differently based on income you can count on instead of risk, if we made sure that we were using insurance the right way, not just to take care of your family if you passed away, but to create tax-free income, use it as a shelter, cover your long-term care at no cost. And if we get the tax plan right, where you can keep all the money instead of sharing it with the IRS, Jody, I'm sorry to say, but if we restructured everything, kind of remodeled your financial kitchen at no cost, I know it's a lot of change, but I think you could retire tomorrow. Jody is one of the only people in 17 years that didn't really ask a lot of questions, didn't want me to prove it. And she just said, you can do that for me. I said, yeah, I can do that for you. She did everything I asked her to do. And I'm not going to ask you to blindly take my advice. Trust me. Uh, we're going to have many, many conversations and the analytical people want to go back and forth 35 times. And all of that is fine with me. You're comfortable when you're comfortable. You make smart decisions when you see clearly and it takes everybody a different amount of time. Jody just was like, all right, let's do it. Jody quit her job, did everything I said, and literally for the last six years has been sending me pictures as she travels the world. Now her son works for me. He started working for me four or five months ago, and Jody has come back for a second wave of financial planning with some new money in her life. I love helping people retire when they want to. If you're 30 and you're not going to retire for 35 years, I've got some pretty useful things to teach you as well. Now, stress test. I love this. Remember the, um, what do they call those things? The crash test dummies, right? Where they, uh, they stick a, you know, whatever, a robot or whatever it is, some sort of a doll. They stick it in a car and drive the car into a fake wall or a real wall in a lab or whatever and keep driving cars into the walls until the dummies stop breaking their necks and say, okay, now it's safe for people or whatever they do. I was just like, well, how do you do that with a retirement plan? How do we know the thing is ready? When I meet somebody, how do I evaluate their retirement plan and say whether or not it's perfect or whether we should make some changes? Or when I deliver a retirement plan or a financial plan or my advice to someone, recommendations, how do I know what I'm delivering is going to be effective and thorough? Well, I created the five lives of retirement test and I just said this sentence, a comprehensive financial plan will take care of you and your family whether you have a long life, short life, rough life, sick life, and when you finally move into the next life. Isn't that fun? I think the best teachers take complicated things and make them simple. And it wasn't easy to come up with, but now that it exists, this test is, has been so useful for me and so many other people and just say, well, let's take a look at your plan. See if it works, if you have a long life, short life, rough life, sick life, and as you finally move into the next life. And what does that mean? Long life is very important. They tell us the number one fear of retirees is running out of money. I feel like the number one fear of retirees and Americans in general is making changes or doing something that is not popular or that the rest of their friends aren't doing, kind of going against the grain or making changes seems to be the scariest thing for human beings after I've met with 10,000 families. But they say the number one fear of retirees is running out of money and you, you should be afraid of that. We need the money to last as long as you will. Well, Long Life says, if we live to age 130, will we have guaranteed income that keeps up with inflation? And 100% of the financial plans I've reviewed before fixing them failed. And 100% of the financial plans after I've reviewed them and fixed them, done kind of the remodel, kind of like a kitchen remodel, um, meet the long life test. Short life, if you passed away suddenly before life expectancy, say you're 45 and you're supposed to live till you know, 93 and you pass away, will your family be okay? If you're in retirement, you're 67, and you pass away. So one of the social security incomes disappears. The remaining spouse is no longer married filing jointly. They might be widow on their taxes or single. They're gonna pay more taxes on less income. Are they gonna be okay? That's short life. Rough life, emergencies, getting access to the right amount of money with no penalties. Sick life, big one. Long-term care, not fun to talk about, but as we fade out and our bodies break down instead of uh, just dying instantly. Most people don't just drop dead. Most people fade away or get Alzheimer's. That fade can be expensive, eight or $9,000 a month for an average of about 2.3 years. 
often is what people spend. You can burn through your entire retirement plan just on sick life. The next life would be if nothing went wrong. You died peacefully in your hundreds, holding hands, looking into each other's eyes. Is the estate plan, is the money going to transfer the way you want it to with the, you know, being taxed the right way, the IRS isn't going to take it. So the five lives of retirement test is invaluable. And I'm going to teach you how to use that or do it with you on your current financial plan. And then anything we come up with together, of course, we're going to use it to make sure it is ready. Let me give you an example. I have a client. She did some investing with me. She used some of my strategies. Her husband did not. And I got a call recently and she said, my husband passed away from septic shock. And by the way, not all of my stories involve someone dying. Sorry that two in a row did. They're just the stories that came to mind. Uh, she said, my husband passed away suddenly from septic shock, left me with life insurance proceeds and whatever his investment, the investments I was not working with. Um, he actually did take very good care of her. And she said, I need, I now need to live off of this for the rest of my life, including this horse farm he left me that I never took care of and was kind of his baby. And I, I need to have income forever and it needs to increase. So I met with her very simply and I said, well, we certainly cannot afford to stick it all in the stock market and kind of hope it works out. Hope is not a financial plan. Are you open to some contrarian you know, alternatives to the stock market? She said, absolutely. Well, we built an amazing, fantastic financial plan for her. She even said, can I have $100,000 to myself to do whatever I want with? And I said, sure, you, still, you can still have all the income you want because we're using retirement tools, not growth tools. And that's one of the things you're going to learn is the stock market's awesome. It's fun. I play in the stock market. It's really neat. The stock market is not a planning tool and it is a terrible distribution tool. What do I mean by that? Growth, 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 growth. You're in the, the accumulation phase of retirement while you're working and saving up the nest egg. When you switch and you turn that off and you start to take money out of the nest egg, which is called the distribution phase of retirement, the stock market becomes the worst option of everything you could pick. So I want you to know that, how to use the stock market, where does it fit? Now, here's a really simple, the third thing I want to teach you, really simple structure. Remember, the best teachers take complicated things or complex things and make them very, very simple. And I come from a teaching family. I want you to know the simple structure called three types of accounts. While you're working, you naturally have them without knowing it. Let's take a peek. In-case accounts, income accounts, and increase accounts. Isn't that easy? Easy to remember, right? In-case accounts, income accounts, increase accounts. What are in-case accounts? In case something happens, most people call that emergency funds or the rainy day fund, right? Income accounts. You never call it that. That's my fancy language so I can have the three ins. Income accounts while you're working, it just means you have a job or you, you know, have a business, right? Sometimes I call it piggy banks, paychecks, and potential. But in case is emergency funds, income is your job or your business. And then why don't you spend every dollar you make? Why are you putting money into a 401k or an IRA or a Roth IRA or cash value life insurance or real estate or you know, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds? Why are you saving? Why don't you just spend everything? Well, because we're trying to build a nest egg and we call that growth or retirement. So emergency funds, your paycheck, and then your savings accounts or your retirement accounts, I just call in case income increase. Well, super simple. Charlie, why are you even covering this? What do you have to teach me? What I have to teach you is that people make a drastic mistake when they transition into retirement from the accumulation phase to the distribution phase where they're putting money into the accounts to when they need to take money out. Which one of these naturally goes away when you retire and go into 30, 40 years of unemployment on purpose? Nobody takes your emergency funds. Nobody takes your retirement accounts. You're going to start using them. That's fine. The one that goes away by definition, get this, is the income. Retirement is, by definition, quitting the job or selling the business, no longer working there, whatever it is. The income, the paychecks, the, the regular paychecks go away, and we have to take the increase accounts along with Social Security and pensions and replace the paychecks. The number one mistake I find that's destroying retirement for people, the whole reason they don't retire early or they don't retire on twice the income, they never set up their income accounts. They try to live off of increase accounts. That's what Edward Jones wants you to do. That's what Merrill Lynch wants you to do. That's what Morgan Stanley wants you to do. Fidelity, Charles Schwab, A.G. Edwards, UBS. 
anybody who sells risk with a side of fees, and I have the license to do it, remember, anybody who sells risk with a side of fees wants you to keep buying their product. And so they tell you, you don't need guaranteed paychecks. You don't need this. You just leave everything in growth, restructure it a little more in bonds, a little more in stocks, and you can take off three or 4% or whatever they tell you. Guys, girls, that is as, what's the word I'm looking for? That's about as novice a financial plan as any professional could ever offer you. If you've been told to leave your money in a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, and that one day you can leave it there and take an income stream from that, you are going to have 30, 40, 50% of the income that you deserve from the nest egg that you've saved up. And I want you to see your options. How can you piss, pick the right, um, nice, nice, nice uh, miss, misspeak, right? How can you pick the right option if you don't know your options? How do you make the right decision unless you can see all of your options? I met a family recently from Florida, crazy. I met a family, $1.4 million in a 401k, $20,000 in the bank, and not a single other asset in their life besides their house. Literally, this is like the most exaggerated um, financial structure I've ever seen. Usually people have money spread all over the place by the time they're in their 60s, 70s. They had all of it in the 401k with a small emergency fund and then a bunch of home equity. And okay, that's cool. That's not really a big deal. It's, it's a lot of pre-tax money. So we got to deal with the tax-free thing, which I can do, you know, no problem. Here's the issue. I said, how much are you guys taking out to live? They said $210,000 a year. Now, I don't know if you've ever studied withdrawal percentages or William Bangan or the 4% rule, which is now down to the 2, you know, 2.8%, 2.9 rule. Um, withdrawal percentages is, hey, I retired with $1.4 million that's in the stock market going up and down. How much do I take, Charlie, every year to live on where, I'll, you know, where I won't run out of money? And for decades, the answer was 4%. So this couple could take out about, what, 40000 plus 16, about $56,000 a year, and maybe have a chance of living uh, before, you know, living, uh, not running out of money before they die. These guys were taking out $210,000 a year from an account that using old outdated numbers could only provide $56,000 a year. They came, they were the, um, they were the step uh, father and mother-in-law of a really close agent that I work with on my team. And I said, can we tell them, I mean, can I be honest with them and tell them the truth? And we just had to share the, the, the um, truth with them. You guys are going to run out of money in eight or nine years. Even if the market, you know, if the market keeps going up six, seven, 8%, you're going to run out of money in eight or nine years. Kind of a heavy pill to swallow, but I said, do you want to fix it or ignore it? Great question. Do you want to fix it or ignore it? And they said, no, look, can, can we fix it? I said, you're going to have to think outside of the stockbroker box. You cannot stay in the world that says risk with a side of fees is the answer to everything. You cannot stay in that tiny little box of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds that Ever Jones and Merrill Lynch want you to stay in when there's an entire world of other things out there that sometimes work better. Matter of fact, what I have found is they always work better during the distribution phase. They said, yes, we went back and forth with 20, 30, 40 different revisions, came up with a plan keeping their income exactly the same using the merit planning model, not just looking at just their assets, restructuring the way that they hold their assets, the way they use their money, the way they deal with taxes. And we're able to give them exactly the same after tax net income for the rest of their life in a guaranteed fashion. But I'm telling you, it was not leave it all in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and hope for the best. Hope is not a financial plan. What I do not do, I believe you should deserve, if I'm saying, let's start a relationship, let's be friends. I think you deserve to know what I'm not going to do because it's scary. You don't know me from Adam. I do not charge planning fees to offer advice. Why? One, I don't like that model. I did not learn from someone that charged planning fees. Two, I don't like paying fees for things. Three, my experience has shown me if I say, listen, I'm really smart. My advice is worth thousands of dollars. Give me $2,500 up front and I'll tell you exactly what to do to save $10,000 a year. My experience is that creates a barrier for you. It, I don't enjoy it. Asking for the check creates a barrier for you and you don't get the advice that you deserve. What I have found is saying, let's have a conversation. Let's take a look honestly, openly at what you're doing. And I'll say, you're perfect. Or I'll say, 
hey, have you ever thought of this? And I'll tell you something. You'll go, I didn't know you could do that. I'll say, well, you can do that. And you'll say, well, that's too good to be true. And I'll say, well, let's go find out if it is true. How would you like to be proven if it's true? And you say, well, can I call 10 of the companies that you say offer that? I say, let's do it. And you find out it's true. You know, there's another option. You go, man, I wish I knew this 10 years ago. That's basically what I have found people enjoy and what works. I am not going to try to make you leave your current advisor. A lot of people have an advisor that they are friends with. They play golf with. They come to the, the birthday parties. It's their brother-in-law. It's their wife. It's the close college. That is totally fine. What I want to do for you is open up your um, understanding, uh, create a different framework for financial services and say, you know what? The advisor you have most likely is either an insurance agent or a money manager, or they might be both. What do I mean by that? They're managing stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and charging you a fee to balance the, you know, to manage the portfolio, or they're offering you annuities, cash value life insurance, whole life, universal life. These are the two advisors that I find. They might do both, but what you need to understand or what would be helpful for you to understand is viewing them as a subcontractor. They're a plumber. They're a roofer. They're a carpenter. They're amazing. Potentially, they're amazing at their job, but what we need is architecture. We need the blueprints, the whole merit plan, mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan. And once those are created, then we know, here's what I want the insurance agent to do. Here's what I want the money manager to accomplish. Let me give you a really easy uh, example. I want someone to manage my money and I'm going to pay them a 1% fee, but they need to beat the S&P 500 because I can buy the S&P 500 or you can buy the S&P 500 index fund like Warren Buffett says for his wife to do if he passes away. He doesn't say go work with this money manager because they beat the market. He can't find anybody that can beat the market either. You can buy the index fund for way less than 1%. So we say to the money manager, you know, I'm not replacing anybody or kicking them off the team, but we're going to give them their marching orders and I'm going to teach you how to hold them accountable. It's not which advisor you use, it's how many advisors you have on your team. Nobody needs to be replaced, but if you don't have someone doing the financial architecture or someone doing the alternative investments to the stock market that have gone up 15 to 25% per year for the last 20 years with no losses, if you don't have somebody doing tax-free retirement planning, showing you how to take every dollar of retirement income without paying the IRS a single penny, we wanna add that to your already amazing team. The next thing, you may hear this in the way that I, the way that I talk, or if you go look at my videos, um, search me online, if you look it up, I'm not gonna pressure you to buy something or hurry up and make a decision. You will never ever feel like, all right, we've had five conversations. What's wrong with you, bozo? Let's make this decision, hurry it up. You're never gonna hear that from me. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy that loves finance and happens to kind of know a lot. I'm not gonna pressure you. I'm not even don't even really consider myself in sales, although ultimately we try to make decisions together to better your life, you are not going to feel any used car salesman. I'm a teacher. If you look me up, you look up my family, we're just teachers. I'm going to educate you and help you to see so clearly that you make smart, smart decisions. I came up with this phrase a while ago called windshield financial. By the way, I see the questions coming in and I, I can't answer them right now while I'm talking, but I'm going to show you um, how I will answer those for you after the webinar here or, um, or by text. I'm actually gonna give you my cell phone number. So I came up with the windshield financial phrase when I realized almost nobody runs over another human being in their car each year. I used to get people to laugh when I present publicly and say, how many, uh, how many babies have you run over this year in the last 12 months? Or how many you know, old ladies with canes have you just plowed through with your car? And they, people laugh and I say, why is that? What's the most important part of your car that allows you to see so clearly that you hit the brakes or don't hit people? And they say the windshield and maybe the windshield wipers. And I say, that's exactly what I see my job as. You don't need someone selling to you. You don't need someone steering you into their stocks, bonds, and mutual funds because that's what their company sells. You don't need somebody steering you into their whole life or indexed universal life or variable universal life because that's what mass mutual or New York life or Penn Mutual wants them to sell, what you need is someone to create clarity so you can make genius decisions like you always do. It is my belief, deep core belief, that you are a genius and you always make smart decisions when you see clearly 
and have all of your options. It is my opinion that the industry is designed to make sure you do not see clearly and to limit your options because the person across the desk or across the Zoom meeting on the other end of the phone, whatever, they have something they want to sell you. That's what we want to change. Here's all your options. What are your goals? Here's some things you never knew existed. Go prove they exist and that they're true. And then I become financial Santa Claus. Most people love what they find out exists and they say, this is too good to be true. Then they go prove it is and they're super, super happy. What I have found, we'll start wrapping this up. What I have found is that most financial plans are simply not including enough of the assets. That merit planning model has been so useful to me over the last 17 years. Mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan. I have not found a way to beat that. That thoroughness, that financial blueprints, that architecture just brings to light so many strategies that help us retire early or retire on twice the income. Most financial plans are simply not accounting for enough of the possible life events. If you have a portfolio of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, it doesn't account for long life. You say, hey, can I have income until I'm 110 years old? I don't know. It depends on market performance. Okay. I don't have a plan. I have hope. How about short life? If I pass away, is my spouse going to be okay? I don't know. It depends on market performance and the size of your portfolio when you pass away and how much income she needs or he needs based on inflation and medical expenses. So it's an I don't know for long life. I don't know for short life. Rough life. Can I access the money? Yes, you can. Yay. Good job, portfolio of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You met one of the five lives of retirement tests. Rough life, you're okay. Sick life, is there any extra money that someone else is paying if I go into a long-term care facility like a nursing home or bring someone in my home? No. Well, how much money will I have? I don't know. It depends on market performance. Okay. Next life, when I want to leave money to loved ones or to charities or my alma mater, how much will I be leaving and how will, be, how will it be taxed? I don't know. Depends on market performance. What you will find and I can teach it to you, you know, after looking at 10,000 families, most financial plans only account for rough life and stocks, bonds, and mutual funds kind of hope that you can take an income and not run out of money. Well, that's not thorough enough for me. That's not thorough enough and careful enough and professional enough for me. As a retirement planner, I want to know that you're going to be okay. Also, most plans are simply not including all three types of accounts, particularly income. Forget what you've heard about income tools. Forget what anybody that wants to bad mouth things say. When you stop receiving a regular paycheck and you want to have an amazing life, what do you do? You replace that with a regular paycheck that you will get forever, no matter what. And some people come back and say, well, well yeah, but how much is it going to grow? And like, what's it going to be worth when I die? And a bunch of other things not related to income, right? Like, being mad at rice because it doesn't have a lot of protein. Don't get mad at the rice. Just also have some fish or protein. They say, well, the income tool is great, but it's not a great growth tool or it's not a great death benefit tool. And I say, I know it's an income tool. This is what makes your life amazing. Not what appreciates or what leaves a huge death benefit. We do that with other tools. This is like buying a car. Buying income is like buying a car. Is a car a great investment? No. Does a car make your life incredible? Yes, it makes your life amazing. And it's a terrible investment. Those of you who listen to my podcast, the Renovating Retirement Podcast can go listen to the episode called Why Bad Investments Make Your Life Amazing. Everything doesn't have to do everything. Something needs to give income for life. Something needs to appreciate. I prefer 15 to 25% a year than what the stock market does. And something needs to transfer the estate or leave an inheritance if you want it to and no one investment does that. You've got to build a financial nutritional plan. This is some fats and some carbs and some proteins and some this and some that. We need multiple things working together to give you the most amazing retirement plan. What are the next steps? Very easy. Some of you watching this webinar may have first heard of me on Facebook. And what is Facebook? Facebook is a place to connect with friends. I know they've taken it to a whole new level, but ultimately it's a place where we become friends. I want you to look my name up on Google. If you haven't, many of you may have already done this or done it during the presentation. Look up Charlie Jewett and just simply ask yourself, could I use a friend like that in my life? If you had a friend in the business that knows what I know, you know, you grew up and it was your brother and you call him up and be like, hey, Charlie, I got to ask you a question. I'm trying to make some retirement planning decisions. I know you're in the industry. Let me ask you this. If you could use a friend like me in the business, 
let's be friends. Two heads are better than one. And I think what you're going to find when we have a conversation, you know, on the phone or a Zoom or whatever, even just texting, I think you're going to find that I have a unique skill set, a super comfortable approach, and I'm a pretty good friend to have. So here's the offer. Here's what I'm offering you. If you want to talk to me, you can go right to my calendar, put some time, just grab 30 minutes with me. You go, I want to talk to Charlie Jewett. I've got a question. Or I want you to review this insurance policy. I want you to look at this portfolio. I want you to look at my mortgage. I want you to look at this tax plan or show me how to lower my taxes. Anything in the whole merit planning model, mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan, plus a bunch of other stuff that you'll learn that I have expertise in. Anything in the financial world that you want to talk about, put yourself on my calendar. CharlieJewett.com should, should go right to a scheduling software. You can grab 30 minutes. If you don't want to wait, and I have my phone right here with me. If you don't want to wait, text me right now. Ask me a question. If 700 questions come in, it's going to be a little while before I answer you, but I will get to it. And if I can't get to them all, I'll hire more staff. What I'm offering you is a relationship. I'm not going to charge you. This is my passion. I have found it better to just say, let's talk. Let's start a relationship because here's the thing, and you can actually go to goodnews or goodnews.com if you want to kind of see my approach. There's no possible way that you could receive bad news from a conversation with me. I'm either going to look over what you're doing, pat you on the back and say, this is perfect. I love it. And I'll probably try to hire you to be a financial advisor on my team because most people can't build a perfect financial plan. But if your financial plan cannot be improved in any way, I am going to pat you on the back and you can sleep very, very well at night. However, there's another set or possibility for good news. The other good news might be, you know what? I found a way to improve this, lower your fees, lower your taxes, increase your returns, guarantee your income, give you increasing income, maybe give you the holy grail of retirement planning, guaranteed tax-free increasing income. Woo! That's what I love to do. If I find a way to improve your financial plan or your retirement plan, even if you're already retired and keep it budget neutral or it costs you nothing to change it, you don't spend any more, we're lowering the fees and I don't charge you and someone else pays me like all the best investments on the planet, wouldn't that be good news? I feel like financial Santa Claus because I've been doing that every day for 17 years. Because you stayed to the end of the webinar, I want to give you a gift. I want to give you these two books that I've written. They're PDFs. You can download them. Just go to cjsbooks.com. It should go to a web page where you can download the PDFs or to a shopping cart where the price is zero. We have a couple different ones. Just go there, download the books, read them, consume them, enjoy them. Thank you for listening to me. I hope that the things that I teach, the, the approach I take, kind of the casualness of it. I hope that you enjoy that and that it's helpful for you because when it's not threatening and it's not pushy, people tend to really be able to learn and get the goods. So let's talk. I'm a pretty good friend to have. There's a picture of me and my beautiful fiance. You can schedule directly at charliejewett.com or you can text me right now at 619-929-4000. And what I promise you is to be a good friend acting like a windshield. Let me show you some things that help you see clearly where you comfortably with no pressure make the smartest decisions you've ever made and you retire early or retire on twice the income you'd planned on or twice the income you are already receiving. Thank you so much. This is Charlie with the Renovating Retirement Podcast. I really appreciate your time and attention, which is the most valuable asset you have. I'll talk to you soon.